Hey guys, how y'all doing? I'm out here at a campground. This is also in Capitol State Forest, and this is Middle Waddle Campground out here. I think they all pretty much start to look the same, except for the fact that some of the ones that are farther away don't have picnic tables because people burn them. And this site, for some reason, has a bunch of firewood left over. I'll just show it to you. Let me also mention, I'm not gonna be using the stabilizer all the time, because it's really a, a pain to switch it back and forth. Like right now, I've got it on the tripod with a different camera housing. In order to put it in the stabilizer, I have to take this entire housing off and put on the other housing that protects it. So it's kind of a pain to, to you know, there, there's no reason to point out all the times where I don't have perfect stabilized video. It's not gonna be perfect all the time, but here's what somebody left. Just, you know, random. A lot of wood. Some of it is pretty light and ready to burn right away. Some of it is incredibly heavy and wet and not seasoned. So I think I might be able to kind of pick my way through it and grab the lightest stuff first, chip that up and get that started so I can get some hot coals. And then once that fire gets really hot, I should be able to put anything I want to on it. It will burn eventually. I left uh, the, the beach yesterday, so I didn't film anything on my last day of my, uh, out there because I left like uh, before even noon. But I did have what, two or maybe even three time lapse uh, saved up from the day. And uh, I'll show you those here real quick. I wouldn't say time lapse are hard, but a lot of people make a lot of mistakes with not be keeping the camera uh, secured. You know, the wind can change it and ruin the entire shot, but you know, it takes hours. You know, we're actually talking about dedicating hours to not walking past the camera or having anybody else walk past the camera. And that was my biggest problem all the time is every time lapse I shot, people would be driving through or the headlights would change it. Uh, now I've kind of learned to keep the camera away from where other people could ruin the shot. You know, so that's why you saw the one on the back of the van that was shot up and then I used the solar panel on top of the van with the solar panel in view and there's still some people walking past but I can I can deal with it. I might be using some of these in <clears throat> both my documentary and maybe even change my intro again now that Bertha has a black top it's gonna be time here pretty soon to change the intro. So yeah. But the beach was nice. Uh, I had a very relaxing day yesterday. I got back into town and got gas and supplies and some more propane. I'm very tired of buying one pound propane cylinders. I can't wait to make the change to a big, bigger tank and then run all the, the cords in. But yeah, I got propane and then I slept at Walmart in Tumwater last night overnight, which is a Walmart that does allow overnight camping but their the app on here says no and they won't let users go in and change it so i mean you can go in and talk to the manager and she'll tell you yes you can stay here overnight but the app says no so i'm wondering again how many times that deterred me from stopping at other walmarts from florida back up here just kind of wondering you know maybe they did allow it and it was just somebody changed it in there but anyway i had a an issue last night that I, I was wide awake, I was at my computer, I was editing facing, you know, the actual stove and everything, and then all of a sudden, I heard my door, you know, like when you push the thumb part in the door, like you try to open the door, and then click, you know, because it's locked. So what had happened, and, you know, and, and I kind of froze up, and, went, what? and then I ran up the front, lifted the curtain back, and here's this guy just nonchalantly walking walking back, you know, down the other aisle, and I physically watched him go up to a car not 30 feet from my van and did the same thing, just on the passenger side, and I think it was, like, the rear door, just checked it, and then walked on, and I'm like, really? <laughs> like, it never even occurred to him that someone was going to be inside the van, because it's a pretty big van, I, I think it's kind of obvious that it's a livable vehicle, but I don't know. Um, that made me feel very uncomfortable, but... God, there's a lesson to be learned here. Uh, not locking your doors, even when you're inside the vehicle, you could still have some conflicts. You could also still potentially have that crime of opportunity thing happen to you, which is not good. You know, it's not like it was planned, like, hey, let's go rob that van right there. No, that's just somebody walking past, and he probably looked around and said, 
I don't see anybody. I'm going to try it. And he tried it. And then he tried it on another car right in front of me. Um, so it was kind of creepy and made me feel uncomfortable. Uh, I'm not in for confrontations. I didn't open up the door and say, hey, what do you think you're doing? Uh, I just kind of slid, slid back into my chair. It took me five, ten minutes to gain my composure and be able to be comfortable again. Um, you know, uh, that, that I always keep my doors locked. Even if I'm in the van, I don't leave the driver's side or the passenger side doors unlocked. Ever. It's always locked when I'm inside the van. Just be, it's just natural. I, actually, I don't even think about it. As soon as the door, even the side door, as soon as it closes behind me, clunk, I push it down. So, uh, yeah, keep, keep your doors locked. That's the first security issue I've had in over six months. Seriously, in over six months. And it wasn't even an issue. It I, I, Actually, uh, that type of issue may have happened sometime in the past, and I wasn't in the van and didn't even know about it. But, you know, I have certain security measures in place that, that um, prevented any anything bad from happening. So that's a success story in, in a lot of ways, but it did make me feel uncomfortable. And I am going to get a better alarm system for the van before I leave, which we'll get into. I'm going to talk about when I'm going to leave and what I'm going to do. But before I leave Washington State, I'm going to put in a... Uh, uh, another another high-tech uh, security alarm system in this van, which will actually be a lot better than the Tioga because it will just be a lot easier to do. So then getting into the plans, you know, so here we are. It's, is it summer yet? Yeah, I think, no, I don't think it's officially summer yet. But we're getting really close to the first day of summer here in the Northwest, and I'm making some plans. I, um... I have a lot of people asking me why I don't go do Burning Man. You know, like people that say, I think it really fits you. It's like an upscale version of Slab City and it's everybody self-sufficient there living off solar in the land and doing their own thing. And um, yeah, I, I agree. I think that in some cases it might be fun to experience that that lifestyle and that, and that culture of Burning Man. However, come on, <laughs> it's at the end of summer in Nevada, in the desert of Nevada, of Nevada. I'm, I don't like heat, so that, that environment would not work for me. I wouldn't be a happy person there. Um, so it was just a kind of a decision I had to make and say, no, I'm not gonna do that. And this is also the last time I'm going to publicly talk about van stock. 20, actually it's 2016 now, they've renamed it. Um, I'm gonna talk about it because I decided not to go and it's not, Here's the thing, a lot of people think that the RV community... How's it going? How are you? Nice dog. Well, their dog's on a leash, so I don't have to say anything, but... They did catch me talking to myself. I always feel like I should be, like, talking to the camera. There's a camera right here that I'm talking to. Otherwise, they're just like... But a lot of people think that, like, me and the RV van community aren't getting along anymore. And it's got nothing to do with that. I'm kind of weirded out by so many people that, that did, like, turn and get on the bandwagon and believe all the rumors. And after a lot of those subsided or were defunct, um, they're still kind of tentative to come back because there's still this awkwardness between us. So many of the people that I used to follow and like, I, I, I don't follow them anymore. Um, I don't really get any ideas from anybody else anymore in that community. So there's nothing that I, I would watch from and be like, that's cool. I think I want to utilize that. Uh, I can definitely say that I am definitely uh, a very unique person with my cat and our van traveling. And I think I want to keep it that way and basically create my own destiny. The thing about van stock is uh, Mike and Chris and James were talking about uh, switching it from Quartzsite, Arizona to Florida. I can't remember what city they de decided on, but Florida instead. And they've changed it. It's not going to be at the end of this year. It's going to be in January of next year. And they're getting all these permits and going to get porta potties and make it official and follow the rules so that nobody can, you know, dog on them and say, try to get them in trouble. So uh, I, I think that'll be a really uh, successful uh, event that they're putting on. And I know a lot of people, they're going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And the reason why I'm not going to do it is because I want to do my own thing. And I think that being involved in that convoy uh, is just absolutely going to put this weird restriction on me. 
where I have to be here and I have to hang out with these people and I have to do this and here's our timeline. You wanna go see that place over there? No, we leave at 10 a.m., all of us together. Uh, when someone's van breaks down, and believe me, lots of vans will break down all the time. Uh, do they just get left behind to fix the maintenance stuff or do we all stick around and wait for it? And there's a, there, there are a lot of questions and a lot of, it's gonna be exciting either way. It's just, I don't wanna be a part of it. And I've decided that I'm more of a, a national parks monument. There's a lot of places I wanna see and I've now started to put together m more of an idea for what's gonna happen. And so I'm gonna share with you the first half of the 2015 trip uh, here for Nomadic Fanatic and Jax in Bertha, the van. What we're gonna do here is hang around the Northwest, maybe even all the way up North, uh, maybe all the way East, maybe some more national parks and stuff and kind of save up some gas money. But also I have several uh, things I need to change and fix about the van. I'm not gonna show you right now, but I had a problem taking off one of the lug nuts of the front wheel, um, stripped, and then completely broke off, like literally broke the stud off of it. So I'm missing, I only have seven of eight lugs on my front passenger tire right now, which is a little uneasy, and I wanna fix that ASAP, like next week on my next paycheck. So that's gonna cost me over $200 just to fix that one little mistake, because they gotta take it all apart and put in a new bolt, stud, and everything, Les Schwab, and oh, what a pain. All, all because I just wanted to test to make sure that I can, and I probably did it, it's it's my mistake. When I, when I painted them, I think I remember having some problem with a thread and it not going on very good. I should have just stopped and reversed it, but I hammered it on and got it on, and this time I couldn't get it off, so. That's okay. We'll, we'll deal with that. But there's a lot of other things that I want to fix um, in the next two, two months. Yeah, about, about, about 60 days here in the Northwest. Plus it is just beautiful here. I only have really one thing and that is a big family reunion at the end of the month uh, here locally. So I'm really excited to see my family. And then after that, no way, that's in July. That's in July. That's in the end of July. So that's the last camping trip I will take in July before leaving on August 1st. And so basically on August 1st, I'm going to leave here. I have calculated it out to travel 38 miles a day. And, it, and it, again, that doesn't seem like much, right? Like the whole way down when I was working in the Tioga, um, I was only traveling between 30 and 45 miles a day. And it was really comfortable and it really worked. Of course, uh, there was that ignition coil problem that I hadn't got fixed back then, which meant when I was driving and the engine was warm and I pulled into a gas station to get gas, you, I couldn't start the RV up again for like three more hours after the engine had cooled. Really embarrassing and, you know, obviously a, a problem. <laughs> so um, I had to make sure that the last place I turned off the engine was where I was gonna stay for that night. Anyway, uh, but, but this van runs, and the, okay, and that's the other fix, the, the rear tank. It's a, the, the fuel pumps out in the rear tank, that's the main tank, not the small 13 gallon up front. I have to have that tank dropped because the fuel pump is inside the tank. So whether or not Andrew and I can, can get to that or if I'm just gonna leave it to a specialist or put in a brand new tank, these are all options that I need to consider both for cost and, and labor and stuff. So, but I have to have a rear tank. Um, not having that rear tank the whole way back from Florida meant that I, I ended up paying more for gas than I wanted to. Even though I had my Gas Buddy app, I felt like I had to stop and get gas more often. I could only drive 100 miles. That's all I had, 100 miles on 13 gallons in that hog. Maybe 110, but every 100 miles I had to stop and get gas and I had to pay more than I wanted to pay even though 100 miles down the road, it's like 30 cents less a gallon. So gonna get that fixed too. But August 1st, leave the Northwest and go east. Because I missed Mount Rushmore, I do wanna go to Mount Rushmore. So I'll go all the way straight east, all the way to North Dakota, and then I'll drop down, go to Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. And then basically kind of go, there's a whole bunch more state parks and monuments and landmarks and stuff, but basically kind of head to Chicago. And then Chicago, wrap back up, go to New York. So there's lots of stuff in between there, obviously, and this is 38 miles, miles a day. But go to New York and New York City, but not go any farther east after New York City right now because the time frame is gonna start getting cold, much colder. Like big difference between Augusta, Maine and New York City uh, the end of November, or the end of October. 
So not go all the, not, not physically go all the way to Maine's, you know, from one corner to the other corner, but then drop back down, go to Pennsylvania, go to um, Washington, D.C., and see everything down the, the East Coast to, and it'll be November 1st when I arrive in New York City. So November 1st, and then that gives me, what is it, 54 days to get down to Florida once again, just like this last winter, to get there by December 22nd, just before Christmas, get into Florida, have another 75 degree Christmas day down there. And then from there, there is no route map, uh, like, I, like idea map back yet, but I will construct that and I've got plenty of time. I think just doing it the first half right now is enough to think about and enough to be excited about, you know? So I will put a route I will try to at least either put a link for the Google Maps that shows the route or maybe I will just take a screenshot of it and put it in somewhere. No, I think I'm actually going to put a Google Maps link in the description if you want to click and see if I'm going to be coming through your, your area or if there's something you know about that I need to stop by while on that particular route or boondocking places or water fill-ups, um, anything like, 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 like that. Oh boy, this video is getting long. I apologize. Uh, the other reason why I parked in this spot and not other spots, I drove around twice and then I picked this spot because it has more of a clearing where the sun can hit my solar. That was the problem at Margaret McKinney a couple weeks ago was I wasn't getting very much solar because it was shady, but it was cool in the van. So, but I'm not going to be in the van all the time. Jackson and I are going to be outside the van with the doors open. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the plans for the first part of the trip. I'm going to show you one more view of this campground spot that I'm at. There's my van right there. Lots of brush and stuff. Sorry, again, I don't have the stabilizer on right now. I'm just holding the tripod. Great places to put tents and stuff right here. But the coolest part of this site is this trail, which you can just walk right through here. I think people have used this as a bathroom. Way back there, I do see some toilet paper and white stuff, but you get to this little clearing type thing right here. You know, it's pretty cool. Might be a good place to uh, hang a shower and use earth friendly soaps because we're not near a stream or anything like that. So I really like this spot back here. I don't know what else to use it for. Maybe set up my solar shower and bring the porta potty out of the van and put it back here so that. I mean, I don't know why I would need to do that. There's no smell from the porta potty at all doesn't bother me at all. Also, the neighbors, well, I had some neighbors come by and introduce themselves, and they said that they were going to be having a fire later and drink, drinking, and said I could come over, and they complimented me on the van. I get a lot of compliments on the van, which is really neat and exciting. I always love to hear what people say about seeing the van for the first time. It's definitely unique and a conversation starter, and I mean, she looks sexy, all black with those chrome beauty rings on it. Looks a lot different. What I really need to do is, you know like when you go into Cabela's and you see the uh, display tents or, or REI or any other place that has the, the tents, but they're the mini versions up top so you can see what they look like all put together. I think Jax would, would really like to have one of those. Uh, I don't know what they do with them after they get done using them as displays because they got to get new models and stuff in, but... I wonder if I could go talk to him, give him my number, and be like, hey, can I get one of those tents when, when you're done with it? <laughs> Had the doors closed and the fan on. I want to show you my thermometer that I installed over here. So this is a, a wireless monitor. There's one for outside, but I do not have batteries in it right now. But that way I can just look in, see indoor, it's 75 degrees right now at 7.34 p.m. Um, I also thought about the idea of maybe putting some Velcro on the front of it so that when I'm not in the van, I can pick it up off that, put it in the passenger window, you know, because Jack likes to lay up here, put it in the passenger window. That way if anybody walks up to the van, you know, be like, there's a cat in there. Oh, there's a cat in there. I'm going to break the windows. He's too... Oh, 75? Oh, well, it's not bad in there. You know, not that that would... You're not on a leash, dude. Can I help you? Oh, you're not on a leash, dude. Let me get your leash. Hang on. Here you go. 
Okay. Come here. Come say hi. Go be an antisocial. Come here. Hey. How you doing? Get spaghetti. This your rock? Oh, okay. This your lookout rock? So you can keep a lookout? Okay. Boy. All right, guys. Well, we're going to stay here in Capitol Forest for a little bit. Not sure which campgrounds or how long we'll stay here, but I may turn the camera on later if I get that fire up and roaring. And uh, yeah. talk to you later.